told him فَذَاكَ بِأَبِي وَأُمِّي and in the battle of Uhud when Rasulullah was telling him to shoot the arrows he said Hiram and he shoot your arrows يَا سَعَرْ فَذَاكَ أُمِّي وَأَبِي Ali رضي الله عنه الصحيح حديث he says that Rasulullah never combined that the statement of may my parents be ransomed for you both of them father and mother except for Sa'ad and Abu Waqqas the only one in the history of Islam Sa'ad who was the one who had the accepted dua in the battle of Badr he asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa to make dua for him and he asked Rasulullah to make it that his dua would be accepted Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for him but also taught the Ummah a lesson. He told Sa'ad that if you want your dua to be accepted, make sure nothing but halal enters your body. Nothing but halal enters your body. Today, our Ummah forgot this lesson. Today, we lie on our taxes. We lie on our <coughs> social security welfare forms. We lie on our visa applications. We lie on everything in our stores, in our business, in our taxis, we lie. Oh, I'm not just talking about zadiyah halal. Yes, that's an aspect of it. But how is your risk halal? And then we feed ourselves and our, our children that haram, and then we're like, oh, we're making dua. Why is not accepted? If you want your dua to be accepted, then you have to look at what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us. Sa'ad radiallahu anhu during the Khilafah of Umar radiallahu anhu he was a, a general. When the people of Faras, the Persians, started to attack and harm the Muslims and Ahlul Dhimma living under the protection of Muslims, Umar radiallahu anhu he began to set out from Medina. Umar, yani Umar is a man. He loves to fight for Sabinillah. So he sets out from Medina. Abdul Rahman bin Auf radiyallahu tells him that if you, Amir al Mu'mineen, if you go, who's going to take care of the affairs here? You're not just a regular guy anymore. You can join every jihad. No, you have to take care of the whole Ummah. Umar radiyallahu loves to go out for Sabinillah. But now he has responsibilities. He says that who will take this very important mission? Who would take the place of Umar? Who would be so qualified? The Sahaba radiallahu came with one answer. Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu Sa'ad ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu as Imam ibn Kathir al-Dahabi, Tariq al-Tabari, look up any of the books of hadith regarding Tariq, you will find in Maghazi, he led the Muslim army, 70,000, according to some of the rabbis. When he got to Faras, the people of Faras, they were on the other side of a river. Hey, you may have been to rivers here. Don't think it's that little calm, trickling river. Go to Iraq. Go and see those rivers. These are huge rivers that are forceful. These are rivers that if you try to swim in, you drown. And when he gets to this river, the people of Faras, being the cowards that they were, the Mushrikeen, they broke all the bridges, burnt the boats. There's no way for Muslims to go across. Now remember, the Muslims at this time were majority Arab. Yes, there was Salman al-Farasi and other Ajam as well, but majority they were Arab. And they were from a desert. They weren't used to rivers. It's not like they were like, yeah, we can swim it. No. They weren't used, they were used to little, you know, wells and things, but not rivers. So when this huge river is in their way, no way to get across, no boat, no bridge, what would me and you do? Well, we came, we tried, 
Right? What can we do? We gotta go home, right? Khalas. Hope we make it home for Gawa, right? Be honest. Right? But not the Sahaba, not the Salaf of this Ummah. So what did Zad ibn Abi Waqqas say? He asked the army of 70,000, has anybody committed a major sin? Tell you. Think about this. Backbiting, major or minor? Lying, backbiting or major? Or back, <laughs> minor or major? Backbiting, lying, is bad. 70,000 Muslims, nobody has committed a major sin. And you wonder why the Muslim of Allah SWT came with them. 70,000 Muslims, nobody's committed a major sin. He says, okay, make rak'ah 10, two rak'ah, take your horses onto the river. How's a horse going to go on a river? It's not a, it's not a creek. This is a major river. You can't even see the other side. As Imam al-Dhahabi writes, that this river had such strong motion that even if you put a log in it, it would disappear. But what does he have? Tawakkul ala Allah. Tawakkul ala Allah. The Muslims are now looking at this river and their Amir, Sa'ad bin Waqas, tells him, take this. Go on to the river. Asim ibn Amr ibn Ansari. He steps up. I want to be with the first. 600 of Sahaba with him. When they get to the river, the horses start to panic. Horses are not meant to be ridden on rivers. Hujr ibn Ali radiallahu anhu, he is the first one. He tells his horse, are you afraid of this nutfa? This little drop? SubhanAllah, he's looking at this major river, but his thinking is about Allah, and he knows in front of Allah, this is nothing but a drop. First one takes his horse onto the river, starts to cross the river. Amr ibn Asim, Tarikh is a witness to this. Look at the history of the Persians, written by non-Muslims. And read when they saw these things and said the devils were coming. They said humans couldn't do this. 70,000 Muslims riding on a river. Ibn Kathir, Ibn Dawa Nihayah. He writes, nobody was harmed. Except there were two incidences. One, from the giant waves and the pressure of the river, one of the Sahaba started to tilt, he started to fall. And Ka'ka ibn Amr al-Tamimi, he pushed him with his elbow. Tell him, stand straight. You are fi sabilillah. <coughs> the other, one of the Sahaba, he dropped his bow. A bow that used to contain water. He dropped his bow. Fell in the river. Another Sahabi told him, it looks like your niya is shaking. Your knee is shaky, you lost your bow. He says, Wallahi, Wallah, my knee has not changed except for Sabinullah. And he started to make dua to Allah. He said, Oh Allah, return that bow to me. I don't want my ashab, my ashab to think that I'm afraid of Sabinullah. When they reached the other side, the bow was waiting for him. Get a good when you have it, read it yourself. Nothing lost, nobody harmed, crossed over the other side. Why? Because their tawakkul on Allah, because their iman, because their aqeedah. These sahaba, they were there in Badr. They sacrificed their lives, their family, they left, they made hijrah with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They were there in Uhud, they were there in Qadisiyah, they were there under the Khilafah of Bakr and Umar and Uthman Ali and others. The sahaba radiyallahu they will go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all of this on their account. What will it mean if you go to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? We need to take account. We need to think, what have I done for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? What am I doing with my life? What is the goal of my life? What is the purpose of my life? What is the top priority? If my top priority is to make money, and when I'm not making money, I'll do a little Islamic activity on the side, 
got this thing all flipped upside down. Your top priority has to be the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Has to be calling towards Tawheed. Has to be condemning shirk. Not just getting into elections and getting people to like you. Oh, we like, they like me. Woohoo! I get an invite to the pride parade. Woohoo! 